I mm-hmm. have several movies I want to talk about br- briefly that deserve some love that don't get Oscar love. A lot of this is genre stuff. Some of this are like things that people were surprised didn't get nominated for Oscars. The first one is The Iron Claw. I think we both thought that this would, would get nominated at least for some stuff. Something, yeah. Not shocked that Zac Efron couldn't get in for best actor because it's pretty stacked. Although, the, I mean, Coleman Domingo could have come or gone. That's not a well-loved mm. movie. But no one saw Iron Claw, so that was part of the problem. It came out really, really late in the year. Mm. We're huge wrestling fans, so we were stoked for it. Although, I think for both of us, knowing the story was made us be like, well, that's not how that happened. Yeah, <laughs> that, that timeline is off. Right. No, that person yeah. doesn't exist for some yeah. <laughs> reason. But it is a wonderful movie, and Efron is incredible in it. Best by far, yeah. Yeah, and Jeremy Allen White's very good. And actually, all the brothers were good. You know, um, Holt McElhinney was all right. I think he, had, he got to play it a little bit one-dimensional. Mm-hmm. Lily James was good. Yep. Um, more Tierney was kind of doing a lot. Mm-hmm. And I have to have to call out two performances specifically in the positive. One being MJF, Maxwell Friedman, um, <laughs> not really being in the movie, which is kind of funny after yeah. <laughs> uh, boasting about how much he had been uh, in it uh, in the lead up to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Kevin Anton played Harley Race. And <laughs> I thought, wow. It's like yeah. they dug Harley Race out of the ground and de-aged him. This is seriously. Incredible. On the other hand, uh, I don't want to say his name, but the guy who played Ric Flair, not great, not amazing. Yeah, not amazing, not amazing. Um, but the movie was very good. I, I liked it a lot. It's my number twenty movie of the year. Blackberry is. Yep. You mentioned Flaming Hot. There have been and there's Barbie. There's just like a an air. There's a lot of movies that came out this year about products that we've used in the past. And Blackberry, mm-hmm. I thought far and away was the best one. Yep. I saw some people upset that Glenn Howerton was not nominated for best actor or best supporting actor. Mm-hmm. And I get, I get it. He was so good. Um, yeah. Kind of just doing his character from always sunny, but in a more serious way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, this is another one. Like if he had made it into the five, I would have thought, you know, I would have been happy with that. But I mean, again, looking at the five that are there, they're really strong. Yep. So it's hard to say who I would have taken out, but they're uh, not for, from for Waterloo. <laughs> And also shout out to Sungwon Cho for getting in a motion a feature motion picture and being very good in it for mm-hmm. the two scenes he was in it. Right. <laughs> um, I really like Theater Camp. Uh, I know. I, have you even seen this yet? Yeah, I've seen Theater Camp. Oh, I thought you were skipping it because you hate Ben Platt. Uh, I, I wasn't I wasn't super into it, into the idea of it because of Ben Platt, but um, I am a voter for the uh, Independent Spirit Awards, and it mm. was uh, nominated for three Independent Spirit Awards, so I did watch it so I could vote on it, and I did like it. I didn't love it, but I did like it. Uh, as a, I've never been to theater camp, but as a summer camp guy, I mm-hmm. thought it was wonderful. Even not as a summer camp guy, I just thought it was very, very funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, my favorite documentary of the year was Albert Brooks Defending My Life, and um, we've talked enough about Albert Brooks two weeks ago and i mentioned this movie then but this is great it's just him and rob reiner having dinner and it's wonderful i've mentioned bottoms a lot on this po- episode people should really mm. see it it's really really funny mm. Bo is afraid we talked about last week a little bit because ari aster we talked about hereditary and ari aster people didn't like this one and i really did i know you did too but yes i did yep. I, th- I think it's great this wasn't a product movie per se but it was a recent history movie dumb money yes this is an incredible movie. This is the kind of movie that people say they don't make anymore. Mm-hmm. They do make it. You just have to show up. You just have to know where. Yeah, you got to know where to look. I mean, it's not not hard. It's really annoying to me that people say this stuff mm-hmm. um, when they're not supporting, when they're not dumb money's not making $100 million. It's annoying to me that people say stuff like that. Absolutely. That's fair. One, one of the best times I had in the movies. J- John Wick 4. So good. Incredible film everything except for the green screen in the final duel and i understand that it would have probably been impossible to shoot that for real because how long do you have a sunrise for yeah (laughs) oh my god what a movie i i I do hope they make more of these and not just whatever ballerina is going to be right agree the one movie that i thought should have been like if i were to take barbie out and put any other movie into the best picture uh, realistically it would have been godzilla minus one Mm, I still haven't seen it. And that really upsets me. It's so good. I'm now a little bummed. I didn't see Godzilla minus one minus color. And I'm just hoping that when they release the Blu-ray, it'll be part of it. Yeah, I hope so, too. Wow. What a movie. I mentioned this before, but the taste of things. I haven't seen all of the movies that are nominated for Best International Picture, but I can tell you, having seen a few of them, that this deserves to be there more than at least Teacher's Lounge, which is good, but not great. Mm hmm. This is one of the most beautiful movies you'll ever see. Or I haven't seen it yet, so yeah, I'm very excited for uh, whenever I'm able to. I think as as we're recording it, I think it it's releasing this weekend or next weekend. 
Yeah, we're actually it's coming to uh, Traverse City on Valentine's Day. I was uh, told this information by um, Jeff Richardson. You may have heard of him. God damn it. Um, but uh, <laughs> but uh, Traverse City is a little bit far away, so I'm not sure if I'll get a chance to go that far to see it. But yeah, it is. It's making its way around. I got to tell you, it would make for a great Valentine's Day date movie. I believe that's what he and his wife have planned. Yeah, it's uh, what a gr- Jeff way to go. It's very romantic. Yeah, and uh, Amelie is actually opening alongside of it, too. Uh, they are not to similar. Theaters, is, yeah, I don't know. I just think it's interesting that Amelie is coming back, too. I like that movie. Someone's just like, here's some French stuff. Here's some more French stuff. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Th- these are all in ascending order of how much I think you should see them. N- the next one's called Eyeballs in the Darkness. I don't know if you watched Eyeballs in the Darkness. I know you watched the, this is a sequel to the movie mm-hmm. Tooks and Fanny. No, I only watched the, that first one. I haven't seen yeah. any others since that and one. I know you don't like Tooks and Fanny, but. I thought um, it was okay. It just didn't move. It didn't do for me what it does for you. Right. I'm I'm obsessed with it. I think, okay, don't stream this on the streamer that is showing it. Uh, the director, Albert Bierney, is selling Blu-rays. And I think you should just buy the Blu-ray if you're interested. I should say what this is about. This is an animated film. It's an 8-bit animated film. So it looks like it was made on a Nintendo. And it's about two blobs, Tooks and Fanny, who go around their little world and talk about what it means to exist. And I I think it's really beautiful. It's all in Russian, which is kind of weird, but there are subtitles. You can, you'll deal. Jake Delt. I, yeah. Asteroid City we talked about. I know you don't like this one. Uh, I, I think it's one of the top three Wes Anderson movies was charmed from start to finish. We got a lot of Wes Anderson stuff this year. Yeah. Real shorts. And I I liked all four of the shorts. Actually, I thought all four of them were good to varying degrees, but uh, yeah, just didn't uh, get into asteroid city at all. Uh, I did a lot. So I think people show, I'm very surprised. I'm glad that Anderson got at least one Oscar nomination this year, Mm -hmm. even if it was for, it wasn't the, my lead. I liked all the shorts a lot too. Uh, I liked Mm -hmm. the rat catcher one, the least. Henry Sugar probably second least, and the other mm-hmm. two I thought were incredible. Good for Wes. I'm surprised that Asteroids. I am surprised that Asteroid City just kind of fizzled out so yeah. so much. And then the movie I think people should watch most that got no love at all from the Academy is The Killer. Yeah, David Fincher still has it. Yep. Uh, yeah, he certainly hasn't lost it. Not at all. Uh, so yeah, check out all those movies. The Killer is just what a ride. Mm-hmm. What do you got for us? Yeah, I've got a couple more movies that I would recommend. Uh, this movie did get one Oscar nomination. It's an original screenplay, but it kind of you know feels like it was really overlooked. It's called May December. Todd Haynes movie with Natalie Portman and Julianne Moore, both of whom are just phenomenal. Charles Melton also has is as a supporting role in it. He is very good. It's it's on Netflix, so it's really you know readily available. I, I really really liked the movie. I thought Natalie Portman was just amazing. If, again, if we're talking snubs for best actress, I, Natalie Portman would have made my five. Uh, for sure. I thought she was probably the best she's ever been. And another performance that I had rooted for for Best Actress, but I you know, just knew wasn't going to happen. Uh, an earlier release this year is a movie called You Hurt My Feelings. Before we get into You Hurt My Feelings, just real quick, if you're going to watch mm-hmm. May December, just know it's like it's pretty it's good, but it's pretty weird. It is. Yeah, it's a little odd. Yeah. Um, you Hurt My Feelings is not odd. It's like a super easy watch. It is. Yeah. It's um, yeah. I feel like Julia Louis-Dreyfus and anything else you you would like this. I mean, it's very much her movie. Yeah, totally. Uh, although, you know, uh, the guy Brutus Menzies, yes, Tobias Menzies, Tobias, Tobias Menzies. Yep. Also excellent in this movie. Just really, really good. Yeah. Yep. He is. It's really their dynamic is really good between the two of them. What else you got? Uh, again, another movie that has has a couple of nominations, but you know, didn't really catch on. It's another Netflix movie. Uh, it's called Society of the Snow. Uh, about the the Paraguayan soccer team that crashed in the Andes Mountains and uh, had to resort to some extreme, very extreme measures to stay alive. Uh, I thought it was just like saying maybe a little bit overlooked, not as widely seen uh, as maybe it should be. I think it's excellent. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, I think you'd really like it. Uh, Uh, It's the same story as Alive, right? Yes. Yep. Definitely the same. Yeah, the exact same story, but I think it's based on the same book. Uh, another one got no love from the Academy, uh, but had some rumblings that maybe it would is uh, Andrew Scott and Paul Meskel in All of Us Strangers. I haven't seen that one yet either. It's coming very soon to Hulu. Uh, I think in like a week or uh, 20, February 22nd, maybe it'll be on Hulu. So um, you should check it out. It's it's very good. Um, Andrew Scott is terrific in it. Paul Meskel is very good in it. I can see why it maybe didn't get you know the love from the Academy. It's a little bit esoteric. Uh, yeah, and- it falls into that same category. I don't even know what to call this category, but to me, it's the same as like After Sun and then also like Petite Maman, kind of like cozy drama, I would call it maybe like it has a cozy vibe, you know? Yeah, I'd see that. The Quiet Girl, those kinds of movies. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Similar to that. That they have the same vibe for sure. We had also earlier in the year, we had Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Great. Um, 
was just so so yeah just so so good rachel mcadams was just wonderful in it the girl who played margaret you know was just was really good one of the best coming of age movies we've had in quite a while uh yeah this was very good i knew it's kind of one of those you knew it wouldn't last to right. the oscars it wasn't big enough or flashy enough but it was just just really really good uh kelly freeman craig was the director she did a great job it's yeah just a really good movie i have uh, no but- proof to this effect but it may have been the movie that broke up the safety brothers oh because they're no longer working together that's right they're not yeah that, well, that's a bummer. What do we got? I got a couple more. One movie that got overlooked in the animated category that I would like to have seen get some recognition was uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Mutant Mayhem. I thought hundred percent, hundred. Yeah, it was really good. I loved that. You know, the the turtles were all you know played by teenage boys. The voices, I thought they were all really good. Yeah, it's just a really really cool movie. I only um, have one gripe with it, which is they gave all the Michelangelo characteristics to Donatello. Yeah, they did kind of, didn't they? Yeah, Michelangelo is just like kind of a awkward guy now. And Donatello was the funny one. I didn't like that. I mean, yeah. I did like it because it was very funny, mm. but just like switch it. Right. Yeah, I, that's a fair thing. There was also a movie early, another early in the year, another great best actress candidate who, you know, just wasn't going to make it to the end. Uh, Tayana Taylor in a movie called A Thousand and One came out early in the year. Uh, I was up for a couple of Spirit Awards was was very good. Is that an A24 movie? Yes. And you like it a lot? Do you think it's like it's really worth seeing or it's just like a sad one? I think it's really worth seeing. I think it's one of the better uh, movies. I mean, it's a it's an honorable mention in my best of list. OK, great. And then, yeah, I just want to list list off a couple more. I mean, these are more into like the the four star territory now of just movies that like I think are good. You know, I just want to kind of you know mention them just to give them give them a little bit of love. Air, I thought was very good. There's uh, an Anna Kendrick movie called Alice Darling. That was good. Creed three, I really liked. I, I enjoy that series a lot. Uh, like Michael B. Jordan in that. Uh, another Netflix movie was out called Fair Play with Alden Ehrenreich that I really enjoyed. Uh, Fallen Leaves was the was uh, an international film contender. Didn't end up getting nominated, but that was uh, very good. We mentioned Iron Claw. That was another one. There's a perform uh, Jim Gaffigan movie called Linoleum that I really liked. I wanted uh, to see that. Yeah, you would like it too. I think it's uh, you. I think you'd like it. Also, there's a movie that came out. It's on Mubi, is where I watched it called Rotting in the Sun, uh, which is a really interesting kind of mystery movie. Um, there was a lot of talk about Saltburn. Uh, you know, a lot of talk about that movie with Barry uh, Barry Keoghan and Jacob Elordi. I liked it. I didn't quite love it, but I, I definitely liked it. Horror movie came out earlier this year. Talk to me. I, I really enjoyed. And there was a movie called uh, another Netflix movie called They Clone Tyrone which mm. I thought was was very cool. Liked that. And uh, the last one I want to mention is uh, actually on Tubi. You can watch it there. It's a really short movie. It's about 75 minutes. It's called Upon Entry. And it's uh, it shows a, a couple coming from Barcelona, Spain, trying to uh, they're trying to move into the United States. And uh, they, you know, get stopped at immigration you know, in the airport. And the whole movie takes place in, uh, you know, as they're trying to just get into the country. Basically, it's terrifying and suspenseful. And uh, it's very good. And it's on Tubi. All right, I'm going to do a few real quick honorable mentions too. Blue Giant, an anime film that got like a lot of love from the animation community on Letterboxd. Pretty good. Rye Lane. Um, Ooh, I like that one too. Yeah, it's about two young black kids in the UK, but also before sunrise vibes. Um, mm-hmm. Pretty cool in that way. Dream Scenario, the Nicolas Cage movie where he's in everyone's dreams. It's, Haven't seen that yet, but we can rent it now. So we're going to watch that soon. It's interesting. Uh, I don't think it's great, but it's interesting. And he's very mm-hmm. good in it. As is, and I'm so in love with her, uh, Dylan Galula. Oh, she's great. And Michael Sarah's in it. He's also very funny. And Tim Meadows. It, there's a lot of funny people in this movie. Uh, no Hard Feelings, the Jennifer yeah. Lawrence movie. That was good. Yeah, it was really good. Um, I kind of crapped on it before, but the teacher's lounge is good. And it's got a lot of good child actors in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, worth checking out. I'm kind of surprised that this hasn't come up before, but it's sort of like a two hit of comic book fantasy style things um dungeons and dragons on honor among thieves i should have mentioned that yeah we like we liked that too yeah really good and then uh you know marvel's kind of dead right now but guardians of the galaxy 3 was very good that was yeah a bright spot and it might be the last good marvel thing period so there's yeah. that <laughs> all right that's really closing the book on 2023 